So this morning, um, in the keynote, we talked about uh, Edge Code, uh, which is a new tool we're working on, which is a distribution of uh, brackets, an open source editor built on top of web technologies. And to talk more about brackets today, is Adam Lehman. Adam. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, my name's Adam. I'm here to talk to you about the Brackets open source project, which is also what we are uh, redistributing as Edge Code. Um, I don't get a fancy guy to do my demos for me or anything, so I'm just going to wing it here by hand. Um, let me jump on in here. So yeah, I'm also going to show you guys Windows for the first time today. It does exist. We do use it. Um, so <laughs> real quick, so my name's Adam. I'm a senior product manager here, and I focus a lot of our developer-related products. So if you've used any of our developer products in the past, I might have had something to do with them. Um, right now, I'm focusing a lot of my time on Brackets, this new open source project. And from a marketing perspective, we usually describe Brackets as a open source code editor for the web. Um, but it's a little bit more than that. There's actually a lot of different facets coming out of it. And so I want to talk about that today. Now, there's Brackets, the code editor, um, which is basically the end product of this open source project. Um, but it's not really necessarily always the end goal. Um, but you might be asking yourself, why do we need another editor, right? There's a billion of them out there. You probably have your, your own favorite editor. So what's making Brackets special? Why is it standing out? Um, we think these three big points are, are what, or why, what's driving us to make brackets. The first one is that we were looking at the space out there, and there were a lot of OK text editors, but there were none really built specifically for web developers and web professionals. There was none saying, you know what, these three languages for the open web standards are more important than everything else, and we're just going to put all of our focus onto that. And so for that reason, brackets is very much laser focused on, on the needs of web design and developers. We also were looking and we wanted to make sure that we could build something that had pretty much unrestricted control and full customization. So as a developer, I'm always using these products and thinking, man, if I was developing this, I probably wouldn't have had that bug or I would have made this a little bit better. And so we wanted to provide an environment that you could basically jump in and you could have full control over it. So whether you're customizing brackets um, specifically for a project and when you start your new project, you throw your customizations away and you start over again, or you're actually con uh, building new features and contributing them back, you should be able to do that. The other thing that's really important is that Brackets remains current with the, the, the changes of the web. Um, it, we can't take five years or seven years to put out another version. I mean, if you can imagine seven years ago trying to imagine what the web would look like, we could never have built a tool that, that would have been that responsive. And so this is really important that we kind of keep driving. And as new standards emerge, the code editor needs to be updated almost instantaneously to take advantage of those things. Now, we talked a little bit this morning about edge code, right? So a lot of people are saying, well, what is edge code? Why is it different? So edge code is really just a distribution of brackets that we've really tweaked and customized for the Creative Cloud user, right? This is where, if you're using a lot of the edge tools and services, we can build that integration point in, and we can make it a much better out-of-the-box experience. So this morning, we showed the edge web font extension. When you install edge code, that extension is there as a feature. You don't have to go and search it out. You don't have to manually install it. It's just there out of the box, and that's kind of our our, our guiding principle there for edge code. Um, we talked a little bit about maybe adding some phone gap support into edge code as well. And again, it'll be part of that install. And this is kind of just where we're getting started with it. But the purpose of my talk today is to actually talk about brackets as an open source project and what we're really after here. Um, you know, when we talked about brackets, we went out and started doing a lot of user research. We, we decided on this idea that we wanted to be able to experiment with new ideas in coding. In fact, Brackets started as an experiment with our inline editor, that quick edit you saw earlier this morning. We had this idea, and we said, all right, well, let's go and figure out how to prototype it. And we started prototyping in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS because it was great to prototype in. And then we started realizing, like, this editor is a great sandbox for trying all these other crazy ideas. And so the project as itself is really about this place where we're trying to invite people to say, hey, we've got some ideas. We think you guys have some even better ideas. Let's all just contribute contribute to this one place, and then we can start to pull all that sort of stuff together. Um, and so that's kind of how we look at brackets. And so there's a lot of things you'll see in our builds are called experimental. We, we play around with a lot of stuff. Um, but that's kind of what we're after. Now, there's a couple key innovations that we've brought together, some of our ideas that we're hoping will lay the foundation of what other people can do. And the first one was quick edit. And Paul showed you that this morning, but I kind of just want to talk about it a little bit more from a philosophical perspective of how we're actually doing it and what it actually means. So quick edit is this idea that we can basically, rather than having to manage a whole bunch of documents, I can actually dive in and out of my code. Uh, when I'm working in HTML, I tend to have like one HTML page, and then I do a little bit of CSS, I come back to HTML. I do a little bit of JavaScript, I come back to HTML, and it's this sort of back and forth. 
Now, because of our laser focus on these front-end technologies, we can actually exploit that. Something a generic text editor wouldn't have done is saying, hey, I know that this HTML is actually backed by CSS. I know it's backed by JavaScript. So when I go in and do something simply as you know, hitting Control-E here, I can get an inline editor that goes out, looks at the CSS in my project, and finds the ones that apply to the body tag. Or if I come down here, and I'll do one on the H2 tag as well, I can pull that one up as well. Um, and this is, again, our understanding of that relationship of these web technologies and exploiting that as far as the tooling goes. Now, inline editors are really cool. Um, I, I really, really like them, and I like the ideas here, because unlike other editors you might have used in the past, there's not a whole bunch of floating panels, flashing icons, a lot of distractions here. We really wanted to keep you just you and your code. And so one thing you'll notice about inline editors, they don't actually hide your code ever. That's one of our principles here. When I opened this up, I didn't have to switch to another file, so I lost my context on the HTML. But you can actually see the line numbers here of my HTML file continue on. So it goes from 11, jumps down to 12, 13, 14, jumps down to 15. And it's that idea that we're not hiding anything. If I want to uh, build something that references the code above, I don't have to go back and forth. I don't have to do all this jumping around, which we've kind of just gotten used to in other tools. Um, the nice thing about these inline editors is they're also then part of the page, right? So I can leave these sort of things open. So if I know I'm working on a couple of these tweaks, they just kind of just become sort of that working set that I'm working with. And it's this idea that, you know, while everything here is technically stored in documents, that's not necessarily how we think when we're programming. We kind of think like we're diving in and out of code, not looking at a bunch of pieces of paper on my desktop and trying to figure out how they work together. And so that's the inline editor. Um, as you saw uh, earlier this morning, though, it doesn't have to just be about editing code in here. Um, we actually think we could put some visual tools in here that make sense for web developers and professionals. Um, you saw uh, Paul talk a little bit about it diving into JavaScript in and out. Um, we've actually seen some of the community members start to pull in documentation. So maybe I'm on an HTML tag, and we go out and we pull Mozilla Docs so we can actually see the documentation in line. Again, not hiding my code, not getting in the way, just part of that sort of uh, natural experience. So the other thing that we've been working on, too, is this idea of like live development. Um, and this is this idea that like we're not going to create a design view. The design views were great, but at the same time, they kind of get in the way of what the actual end result is going to be. So I could look great in my design view, and then I go and I put it in the browser, and it looks completely different. So what good was the design view? I mean, it got me started. but. So for brackets, we said the design view is the browser. And so we want to not have some special browser that you have to go and install. Or you don't have to go and get an extension or anything like that. We're just going to work with the same browser that's installed on your computer, the same browser that's installed on your parents' computer. That's how we know that the design and the stuff that we're working on is going to be exact. So those are just two ideas that we had at Adobe. And they actually can start to lay the foundation of bigger ideas. As I mentioned before, we had someone from community start to build in documentation. So they used the, the quick editor. They used live, doc or live development, started putting all these sort of pieces together. And these were just some seeds that we wanted to get out into the project early. But the project is really not just about all the great ideas Adobe has and using some of our experience. It's really about working together with the community to take some of the ideas from there. You know, we really strongly believe that the best people to build tools for web developers are web developers themselves. Um, we drink that champagne. I'll talk about that a little while, about how we're building products with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS so we understand those pains and those hurdles. But we, there's already this large community. There's all these great tools that are out there on the web that we can start to then pull in and start to innovate together. And so that's really what I want to kind of talk to you guys about. Now, how many people here, I can't really even see you because of these lights, are, have contributed to an open source project? That's what I thought. Not too many. And, and there's, a, there's a couple reasons for that. I think you know, sometimes they can be daunting, and they're not very approachable. And so it's more, you know, what we wanted to do with Brackets was more than just, hey, let's just throw some code out here. We really want to make sure that we can encourage people to get involved, and so they feel like it's really easy to do. And so we're trying to build a very approachable open source project, because writing the code is probably the easiest part for most people to do the open source contributions. It's the other stuff, like getting to know the guy who's in the project, and making sure your code looks right, and making sure you're doing something that's in line with what the project is doing. There's all these other sort of things that come in. So the first thing that we've done to make brackets as approachable as possible is we looked at the license. Um, now, hopefully, you guys won't have to become open source license experts like myself. But you recognize that MIT is a really nice and open license. This basically says you can do whatever you want with brackets. Um, if you want to embed it into an existing product, you want to put it into something that you're going to sell for a billion dollars, I'd like a little bit of that. But you don't have to legally. Um, you can do it. But the license is basically there to say, have fun with it. You know, we didn't want to put a cap on it to say where it could go or where it couldn't go. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're developing it completely in the open on GitHub. Um, and this was a big change for us at Adobe, too. 
Um, and this basically means that it's simply go to github.com, click fork me, and you've got your own branch of the code. You make, you make a change, you hit pull request, and it comes right back. Um, for those who haven't been using Git or GitHub, I highly recommend checking it out. It just made the process of contributing to an open source project so much easier. You really don't even have to know anybody at the project. You don't have to know any ins. You just go through the system, and, you, and you're good to go. So that, that helped us lower some barriers. But the other big barrier was a lot of the tools we've been using in the past weren't necessarily written in the same language that we're actually experts at, right? So maybe we built a great JavaScript editor in Eclipse, and you had to go and learn Java if you really wanted to change it. Or you were using something else, and they had an extensibility API, but it required C knowledge or something like that. You know, it's corny, but it's true. But we make, we, uh, we make brackets with love in JavaScript. Um, our love for trying to build a better code editor, but the JavaScript part is important because it really means that if you have the skills to uh, use brackets day to day, you have all the skills necessary to contribute to the project. So check that off of another barrier of why you might not want to contribute. But we didn't stop there. We also wanted to make it very approachable. Once a big open source project gets rolling, it's usually kind of hard to figure out where you can make an impact in that project, right? The code base starts getting really, really large. And if you wanted to learn that code base, you've basically got to spend a lot of time figuring things out. You maybe have to try to keep up with the changes that are happening as well. And so we've done a couple of things to try to make that a bit easier. If I pop out here, and I'll jump out to GitHub for a second. I just keep hitting that button. The first thing we've done is we have this concept called starter bugs or starter issues. So if you go into our, our bug base, yes, we do have bugs, believe it or not. Um, we actually take in uh, smaller bugs that we think are sort of minor or they're actually something that aren't going to be too you know, life-threatening that we need to fix right away. We mark them as starter bugs and leave them open for the community. These are bugs that probably take maybe about an hour to fix or something like that. It's not this huge time investment, but they're great if you just want to learn about the code. You want to learn how brackets is architected, but at the same time, you get something done. You fix a bug or you add a little feature. And so that's what starter bugs are. Um, I'm happy to report, like, as fast as we put starter bugs up there, we find people closing them out for us. And they, they're, they're a really great way to just start getting into the project, feel a little comfortable about what we're doing. Um, of course, if you're feeling a little bit more um, courageous, we also have what we call starter features. Now, any Trello fans here? It's okay, you can cheer. Yeah, thank you, okay. Uh, so we actually put every possible feature that we could have imagined building and that we intend on building into a backlog that's publicly available. So you can see exactly what the team at Adobe is working on at that moment in time. You can see we just finished up Sprint 14, which is actually what we released with Edge Code today. Um, and now we're taking a little bit of a break. There's nothing in our backlog. Um, but all of our features are listed here in the order that we're building them. So you can actually see our product backlog. The next stuff we're going to do now after this big hush hush September milestone is we're going to start looking at more of the phone gap extension. We got to get this tabs versus spaces stuff. But the idea here is, is as a contributor, if you wanted to jump in, you don't have to worry about us stepping on your toes or writing the same feature that you were about to write and then all your code gets thrown away. You can actually see what we're working on. But if you actually go in, in here and filter, and I go over to Starter Feature, we actually tag features that we think are really good for someone getting started with the project. So these are smaller features, maybe an hour or two, you know, no more than six hours would be involved to build this feature, so you don't have to like, make this big commitment. But it's another great place to get started, to start actually building something that's new into the product. And so you can see there's some things like, hey, we need help with documentation. Big surprise there, we're open source. Uh, we can move lines up and down with a keystroke. You could resize bo the bottom panels, make stuff like that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff, and we're constantly doing backlog grooming and, and, and pulling these sort of ideas out. So we, again, we wanted to make it easy for this project you know, to jump in at any point. You don't have to be following us from day one. Um, the other cool thing that we've done is, uh, as of Sprint 13, a couple weeks ago, we actually added um, language support, not the programming kind, but the actual spoken kind. So Brackets, by default, now has French support and it supports English, um, but we've also gotten a number of contributions from the community. So I think we have German, we have Spanish, and I forgot what else came in. I think it might have been Portuguese or Danish. I'm not sure. But it's another, great as it's another great area to actually contribute to the project. You don't have to dive into the code and learn all about that sort of stuff. If you're bilingual, that's awesome. We would love your help. And you can make sure that we can get this editor in everybody across the world's hands who wants to become a web developer. So, oh, let me get back up here. So we also recognize that 
not everyone wants to hack on the core. No one wants to just fix the bugs that we have in the editor or work on that core stuff. Most of the time we're talking to people about their contributions, their perfect ideas for extensions, things that go above and beyond or add extra flavor to, to brackets. Um, you've seen an example of one of the extensions that we built for brackets that became a feature of edge code, which is with edge web fonts. Um, but extensions are really, really nice and they're easy ways to experiment with brackets because they're nice and modular. So we've been building a robust extension API over the last uh, couple months. Um, we basically build our APIs by building new features. We see where we hack brackets too much. We build an API and, and, and course correct. Um, and so a lot of the features that you've seen actually built into brackets, like our inline JavaScript editor, is actually an extension. So you know, again, we're, we're actually following that same sort of architectural pattern. But extensions are great if you want to build something that may be not specific to front-end coding and what the mission of brackets is, right? So maybe you wanted to build support for PHP. Maybe you wanted to build better tooling for jQuery or Backbone.js or Node.js. These are perfect for extensions that can then just be dropped into anybody's project and, and, and brackets can start to become, take a life of its own. Now, when you're building extensions and when you're working with brackets, we, get, we give you actually a lot of stuff that's in there. So we're building on a lot of the sort of the industry standard frameworks that are out there. So most of our UI is being driven by um, Twitter Bootstrap, which also brings less support in there. Um, we've got jQuery because no one likes to query the DOM by hand. Uh, we've got Require.js to do our dependencies. We've got Mustache.js that's we added actually to start doing templating around the multi-languages and stuff like that. Um, and the core code editor is actually based on another open source project called Codemir. Um, which we're actively contributing to and fixing bugs and, and increasing performance on. Um, the cool thing is that that's what you get if you're just building a feature in brackets and you're fixing a bug. But if you start to build an extension, you can bring anything you want. You can bring your own you know, favorite framework, your own favorite library, any JavaScript or HTML, and anything that will run in the browser, it's going to run inside of brackets too. Um, so you actually have full control basically to, to hack away at brackets. If I pitched you enough, maybe you're, you're ready, you're comfortable, um, we actually are here to help. In fact, the team is always available to help with people, and we actually spend most of our days in IRC chat, or brackets on free nodes. so 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, I can pretty much guarantee we're all in there. I can pretty much guarantee we're even in there on the weekends. Um, we, we do feel pretty passionate about this project, and we're always helping people. Um, we do have a developer mailing list on Google Groups, uh, it's like brackets dev or something like that. Um, that link works, but I should have typed it out. Um, and it's a great place to go and let us know what you're working on. That's actually one of the biggest things that we're having a hard time with is people grabbing features, going and submitting the same feature at the same time, which is a great problem to have, by the way. Um, but so we always rec recommend that if you're going <coughs> to fix a bug, you're going to work on a feature, pop on the mailing list and just say, hey, I got this one. That way, at least we have a central place when someone else goes and grabs it, they can see what everybody is working on. Um, starting next week, we're actually going to have our first public brackets hackathon, or a brackathon, um, in London. And we're planning to actually do these uh, across the world over the next year, uh, several cities, several events. So if you are you know, in a certain area and you've got an awesome JavaScript community that you think would love to do a hackathon, please reach out to us and we'll, we'll hook it up. And we'll send you guys everything you need and, and a bunch of engineers too. Um, but when I say that we're here to help, I also want to stress that this isn't just rhetoric. We've actually built our team and our software development process around this open source project. And we, we knew we were going open source from day one. We didn't have to retrofit anything. And so just to kind of give you a little bit of insight of how we work here, um, our team is 100% an Agile team, and we love Scrum. We follow it to the book as much as we possibly can. Of course, as a product owner, I get to bend the rules, and they yell at me, and you know, you know how that goes. Um, we do review pull requests every single day. So we want to make sure that if you're doing a lot of work, you're not going to send it into a void that no one sees. As part of our daily stand-ups, we say, all right, what pull requests are up? Has somebody responded? Has somebody asked that question? Now, I'm not saying it gets merged every day. There's a big difference here. Um, but we will review. You will be in contact with us. And I think the worst you would ever have to wait is if you submitted something like, you know, Friday at midnight, you might have to wait till Monday morning. But usually, someone will answer even before that. Um, our, um, our velocity is at about two and a half weeks. I'm sorry, not our velocity. Our schedule is about two and a half weeks. We work on a 12 business day cycle. Don't ask me why 12 is this magic number for our team. It just works really well. But it means that there's a new version of brackets out roughly every two and a half weeks, um, which means we are trying to stay as relevant and as on top of the change, changes in the web as you possibly can. But it also means that if you make a really big feature, chances are it's not going to wait a year before it gets into brackets. It's not going to wait six months or three months. It's going to be in there pretty soon because we have a lot of opportunities to keep shipping updates. 
Um, the other rule that we have on the team is we actually put external contributions in a higher priority than even our own. So you saw our backlog there. We've actually had a number of times where someone went down, grabbed something from the bottom of our backlog that we didn't think was very important, like maybe making the, the code size bigger and smaller within the editor. Um, someone did like 90% of that work, submitted it to us, and said, you know what, let's move this priority up in our backlog and let's take it across the finish line for them. And so you can actually see that if I go ahead in here. And that's actually a feature that's now in brackets. So if I go ahead and close this guy, you know, control plus and minus, nice comes from the community, hit control zero, goes back to normal. I mean, it was great. So we actually do prioritize a lot of the external requests that we get. So you don't have to say, oh, I got to wait in line for all the, the Adobe stuff that they're working on. So I am happy to say that like, this seems to be working out really well. In fact, we're blowing by a lot of the expectations that we really had with this project. We're pretty humble going in, and I'll be honest with you, we thought we were aiming for six developers, or six contributors for the first entire year. Um, I'm happy to say within the first four months, we've actually had over 12, 20 different people outside of Adobe contributing to Brackets, uh, which is awesome, so thank you very much. Um, I do actually have to point out, too, <laughs> this whole outside of Adobe part. We found something really interesting. Uh, when you run an open source project inside of a large company, a lot of people in the company start to participate. It's not just about the external contributors. It's about the other teams, because all they have to do to, uh, to contribute is go to GitHub, fork it, submit a pull request. So I'm happy to say we've gotten guys from the Animate team working on brackets, guys from the Inspect team, the Reflow team. We're sharing code. It's really, really great. And so when I say there's 20 people outside, there's actually a lot of people even inside that are aren't even part of the Brackets team that are now contributing, which is fantastic. On top of the fact that we have this really big growing list of community extensions available. So where are we going from here? Um, you know, the question I always get, mostly from my boss, is when is it done? Um, it's not going to be done for a while. In fact, you know, we made the conscious decision to get Brackets out there before it was a 1.0, because if we did all this work and then one day just released it and said, here it is, it's open source, well, then it's Adobe Brackets. It's not really the internet. It's not the web Brackets. Um, so for right now, what the Adobe team is being focused on is actually building a lot of those core features. We have a lot of other ideas beyond just quick editing and this live preview that we want to get in there just to kind of to spark, uh, to light a seed or kind of light, light the spark. And I think you're going to see one of them a little bit uh, this afternoon, a uh, new project that's coming out that's part of Brackets. Um, but for right now, for the rest of the year, we're really focused on those core features. So Brackets um, can be used every day. I mean, we use Brackets to develop Brackets in this weird inception-y recursion thing that goes on. Um, and so it, it definitely works. And every two and a half weeks, the builds that we produce are extremely stable and they're really high quality. What's missing is a lot of the core features. So it might not be ready for your every day-to-day -day use because we're still missing some advanced search and replace. We're missing CSS code completion. And so those are the things that we want to work on for the rest of the year. When we get into 2013, I think that's when things start to get a little bit more interesting. Because we're building on the open web stack, we're not constrained by any certain platform or any certain OS. We can go wherever the web goes. And so we have some ideas about maybe taking brackets, wrapping it up in PhoneGap, and getting it out to a tablet. Maybe we could have the exact same development experience in our, on our iPad as we do on our desktop. And wouldn't it be cool if my project synced between those? And so if I'm at work, but I'm at home on the bus or something, or heading home on the bus, I can actually pull it up on the tablet. Um, and so we're focusing on those core features, and then next year we want to actually start focusing on different platforms to see where we can take this. Um, so tablets, cloud, beyond, and, and a couple other ideas. So hopefully I've convinced every single one of you guys to contribute to Brackets. You have no more excuses. Um, if, if one of your excuses is that your job doesn't give you enough time, quit, and then you can start working on Brackets. Well, actually, we are hiring at Adobe, and you can go to html.adobe.com slash jobs, and we'll give you a job that will totally let you work on open source. Um, but you know, our project is hosted on GitHub. A lot of our documentation for developing extensions, for how to contribute to brackets, lives on that GitHub wiki. I mentioned that our public backlog of every single feature we've talked about is out there on Trello. What I forgot to mention is that not only is that backlog public, but you don't have to actually have a login to be able to comment on the features or vote them up and down. So you can actually participate in the priority process. If you're like, oh man, I hate that it uses spaces and it doesn't use tabs when I hit the tab character, that needs to be high priority, you can actually vote that up and we'll get that feedback and that we actually take that into account when we're actually thinking of what we're going to work on next. Um, and of course, you know, no project is complete without having a Twitter account. It's probably the best place to follow us for news and updates. We do release every two and a half weeks, so we'll, we'll keep you up to date on that as well. So with that, I want to say thanks for, in advance for all the contribu our contributions you guys are going to make. Um, I also do want to thank um, Adobe uh, for actually standing behind this project and, and letting us work on this day to day. Um, it's, it's really quite often.
Yeah, animated GIFs. They make the web. All right, well, thank you very much. My name is Adam.